uh, waves probably starts off with a definition or something, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, describing the longitudinal and transverse, that's okay. That's okay, that's part one and two, is it? Examples as well. Oh, yeah. So that's all fine for A then. Yeah. So let's get to the juicy part, B. Wait, uh, same three properties come into all types of waves in the electric mm. spectrum. What is that? Three things that <coughs> electromagnetic waves, which are like radio, x ray, mobile phone, Wi Fi, something that they all have in common. So the first property is that they don't require a medium, that they can move in a vacuum. Okay. The second one is that their velocity will be c in a vacuum as well. So they, tra they all travel at the speed of light, mm. x-ray, wi-fi, all that. And the last one is I believe they are transverse waves. Uh, so these are three properties. Is, is that the end of part A? Is it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, the uh, diffraction gradient has 3.75 three lines line per meter, yeah. Determining the line spacing. Okay. Uh, lines per meter, so the small d is 1 over 3 times 10 to the 5, which would be about 0 0.33 times 10 to the minus 5 which would be 3.33 micrometers. Okay, that's part one. Mm -hmm. Determine the diffraction angle the second order of red. And lambda equals d sine theta, and they want the theta, is it? For the second order? Yeah. So that would be sine inverse and lambda over d. Now they must give you the wavelength or something for the... Yeah. Six three three nano, and it's the second order, and over three point three three micro. What's part three then? The highest order. Ah, yes. So the highest order happens when theta is 90. Because that's the, that's the maximum angle you can get. So the highest order is just d over lambda, which is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6 over 633 times 10 to the minus 9. So that's like going to be like 5, mm -hmm. isn't it? Did you get the minuses right on the powers? 3.33 10 to the minus 6 over 6.33 times 10 to the minus 6. Is it 630 or 0? 633. Yeah, it is. Um. Oh. Oh, it shouldn't be that big. It should be like, like a thousand times. What did you get there? There you go, 5.2. I use the same. That's grand. So the maximum order five. is 5. Yeah. Even if it's 5.99. Five Even nine. if it's 5.99, yeah. Mm. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, for the red light is replaced by blue light. Wavelength 506.4 nanometers. 506.4 nanometers, yeah. And it's found that the fashion angle was one order. So this one's a bit confusing, but what they're saying here is that um, you have an order for red light, like for example, order equals three, mm -hmm. uh, and then when you replace it with the blue light, that the place 
the, one of the orders of the blue light matches up perfectly here with n equals three. So like it's like saying if n equals three for the red, that's in the same place as n equals four for the blue. But of course the problem is we don't know what it is. So we'll call it x and x plus one. Because we don't know the order. Oh, just one order. Yeah, one like one order above. Yeah. But what we do know is in the uh, um, n lambda, uh, I'll write n1 lambda 1 equals d, because d is the same for both, and sine theta, and theta is the same for both if it's at the same spot. Mm. And n2 lambda 2 equals the same thing. So that means that you can say n1 lambda 1 equals n2 lambda 2. And we're calling the order for the red one x, and the next one is x plus 1, yeah. So a little bit of algebra, x lambda 1 equals x lambda 2 plus lambda 2. So we can get x equals uh, da -da -da -da, lambda 2 over lambda 1 minus lambda 2 when you rearrange and solve this. You bring, the, you bring this to the left, you factor the x out and then you divide it underneath. Um, so if you just take the wavelength for the, uh, so it will be 506.4 and then the difference between 506 and um, 633 so 633 minus 506 so what's that going to be like 5 or something or 4 oh well that's just a matter of using the formula again and lambda equals d sine theta so then yeah, sign in. You can use either. Uh, so sign in first n lambda over d. So if we go with the red light, that would be sign in first 4 times 633 times 10 to the minus 9 over, uh, what was it, 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6. So it's going to be like, a, I don't know, 55 or 49. So 50 minutes. Oh, 49.49. Yeah, 49 and a half. 49 and a half, then. Uh, great. Now, that's a circuit one, is it? Uh, I mean, a, a graph one. They want you to draw the graph. So, let me just open up the graph and program here. Um, so, this is to... Um, this is to measure, this is the photoelectric effect, I can recognize it from here. So what's happening in that picture, can you see they have that little kind of, um, oh I don't like to see it, I'm just trying to explain it here. You see that, they have that solar panel on the top where it says light. So what happens is um, light hits that panel and that frees electrons and co causes the electrons to move and the electrons will move um, to the right and then what you have down the bottom is a voltmeter and a variable voltage source so what you do is you increase that voltage until your voltmeter reads zero so what you're doing is you're sending electrons in the opposite direction to cancel out the electrons coming from the solar panel so you can uh, slowly increase the voltage until you cancel it out and get a V in the voltmeter and then you know whatever your voltage is at on the power supply that's the same as the solar panel. Um, so this is how they measure the V and the way to measure the current is you have your um, micro ammeter there. Yeah. yeah. Now, of course, it's important that you measure the current before you increase the voltage because the current will also say zero when you cancel the two out. So what you do is uh, you look, you measure the current, and then you slowly increase the power to cancel out the voltage from the solar panel. So all this detail is actually not important because at the end of the day, they've just given you the data and they're asking for a graph. So what are the two values we have? Um, the wavelength of the light that they used and the voltage on the, volt uh, the voltage. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me just put those in. So, um, 
They probably use nanometers. Going up in 50s. Okie dokie, until 650. Super. And then what is happening here? This is voltage in volts. Yeah. 1.25. Yeah. 0.94. Oh, okay. 0.651. 651, yeah. 0.06. Okay. And then, what's the first question? Okay, well, frequency. Uh, I'll take me. Oh, that's what they want the frequency unit in. Yeah, so they want you to put the answer in 10 to the 14th. Let me just make that F as small as. So, um, you have V equals lambda F, and you know the V is C, yeah. so C equals lambda F. F is what they want, so that's C over lambda. Now, the C is, well, I suppose it should be more accurate, it's like 2.99, or whatever it is, I'll just leave this. Well, no, I'd like to know, it. is it 2.99 rather than 3? I always use 3. 2.9979, yeah. 2.9979, so... Yeah, I'll say 3. So 3 times 10 to the 8. Now, I'll just do the first one as an example. The first one is 400 nano. Now, we can't just bash it into the calculator because they very particularly want the answer 10 to the 14. And it's exactly 10 to the 14. Well, that was convenient then, yeah. Um, so let's just double check how we can get 10 to the 14. Oh, because when you do 3 and then these powers would be 10 to the, well that would be 10 to the 8 plus 9, because it's 8 minus minus 9. Mm. So that's 3 over 400 times 10 to the 17. But they want 10 to the 14. So that's 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 14. So the way I see it is, if I take 3 divided by 400 and multiply it by 1000, so if I take 3 divided by 400, which was this number here, and then multiply it by 1,000, I should get 7.5. And you said you got 7.5 times 10 to the 14. 7.49, yeah. 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 So uh, I can complete that. And these are all 10 to the 14 then. Mm. Okay. Um, how many marks for that now? 2, 3? Two, 2, okay. Show that voltage equals SF over E minus. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 So what they've done here. Ah, it doesn't. It's a pi. It's a pi. Yeah. So your solar panel here frees an electron, and if the electron goes to the right, then that means the current is going to the left here. And here you have a power supply, and that sends a current to the left as well, so that these cancel. So it means that the voltage here matches the voltage here. Now, um, um, that means the energy here, or the power here, or whatever you prefer, should equal the power here, or also the energy here equals the energy here, or whatever. Um, you know that the energy of a photon is HF, and this photon hits the electron on the plate and frees the electron, so that will equal the work function, yeah, the phi. Um, and you know here... Um, Actually, tell me what formula I'm trying to get to that will help guide me. V is in it. V over E. trying to think of a nice way to do it. Um, so, 
um, the formula is HF equals phi minus kinetic energy because when the electron is free, it will have kinetic energy. And then this. I use the electron, uh, electron volts instead of gain. Yes. I'm trying to do this as simply as I can. I think it's simpler last year. Okay, this is what I'm imagining here. One electron gets freed from the solar panel, and at the same time, you send one electron uh, in an opposite direction to cancel that one. So this electron, it will have an energy um, of equal to uh, IV. But you know what the current is, it's the charge of an electron. So this is how we get the EV. Mm -hmm. That has to match um, the energy here. But the answer, the answer doesn't have kinetic energy in it, does it? No. You know what? I think I need to look at what I'm trying to get to. So if we can call out the formula, let's look there. HF, uh, voltage equals HF over E minus phi over E. Maybe I wrote my formula backwards here. Let me just think about this for one moment. Okay, so here's the electron. It has a HF. It comes in here and then frees off. Um, ah, I have a sign mistake. The energy at the very beginning is HF minus phi because it's trapped here. Mm -hmm. And then later the electron is free and it has kinetic energy. So the formula is kinetic energy equals HF minus, minus, minus phi. Okay, that's good. And then this free electron is sent around in the circuit and it uh, collides with an electron you send in the opposite direction and they must have the same energy so that they cancel here because uh, this electron is stopping this electron. So the energy here is QB, which we said a moment ago is EB. So this energy must equal this energy because the kinetic energy of this electron must equal the kinetic energy of this electron so they cancel, that they stop. Because, for example, if this one had more energy, then it would continue forward this way at a uh, slower speed, but still would. So then you get uh, EV equals HF minus phi. So V equals HF over E minus phi over E. Now, I have a funny feeling that if you look at the market scheme, you'll only see those two lines, which you can nearly guess from just looking at the answer and going backwards. Can you see what they do? This is my guess. And is it two marks? Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking like this, one and one. Um, yes. Literally, these two lines only. Well, HF equals phi plus K. So they 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 and then EV equals one. All right. <laughs> one more line. One more line. Okay. Yeah. Now we're talking the graph. Great. So what way do they want the graph? What do they want? V voltage and y axis and the frequency. So they want this one on the y. Yes. So what I'll do is I'll just move this to yeah. here, and I'll just paste the values. Uh, Okay, what? Uh oh, what the heck? I must last. No, it's. Okay. Pay special only numbers, okay. So we're doing a chart of this. Uh, chart, great. Uh, just before we put the chart, it doesn't say anything like millivolts or anything for the unit for volts, does it? No. No, okay. Scatter. Uh, don't need that. And uh, I'll just write graph. And uh, on the x axis is voltage. Frequency in 10 to the 14 hertz. And then the y axis is voltage. 
in both. Okay. And of course, you draw this in graph paper, and uh, I know what they're going to ask for next, so I'm going to put the line in now to get the slope, because I'll need the slope for something later. Uh, so, what's the next? How many marks for the graph? Nice. And then the next thing is use the graph to something, something. Yeah, I mean, an experimental value of the constant. Okay. So if we go back to that form that they asked you to prove, V equals HF over E minus phi over E. Think about the graph they asked you to make. You put a V here, and um, uh, uh, frequency here. So it's like the V is a Y, and the F is an X. It's like the V is a Y and the F is an X. So it basically means that um, the slope H is H over E. So then the H will be the slope times E. Now you have to be careful though because the frequency is in um, what units do we say? 10 to the 14. So when you look at the slope, the units for the slope will be volts over 10 to the 14 hertz. So um, this n here will be volts over 10 to the 14 hertz. So because of this 10 to the 14, I have a feeling that whatever you get for the slope, you'll have to multiply it by 10 to the 14. Um, or divide it. We're going to think carefully about this. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, so the M is in volts over 10 to the 14 uh, hertz. And the E is uh, electrons, so that's in coulombs. So your H will be in uh, volt coulombs uh, over 10 to the 14. We don't really want this 10 to the 14 here, so we'll have to, yeah, we'll have to, whatever we get for VC, we'll have to multiply it by 10 to the 14 if we don't want the 10 to the 14 here. So what I'll do is I'll get the M, I'll multiply it by E, Confused if I should multiply the divide. Well, we'll worry about that in a moment. Let's get the M first. So the M is 0 0.421. So the M is 0 0.421. And the unit here is um, Y over X, which is volts per. 10 to 14 hertz. Ah, yes. So, if I want it in just volts and hertz, I need to take that number and divide it by 10 to the 14. Volts per hertz. Um, I'll leave it like that for a moment because I still have a little bit more to do. If I want the H, I have to multiply M by E. So, I'll take 0 0.421 over 10 to the 14 and multiply that by E, and then we'll have our answer. That will be volts, hertz per coulomb. 6.74, 10 to the minus 34. And that, I believe, is extremely close to the um, value of H um, on the calculator. Why don't we? Uh, is it like 6.75? I think. Okay. Now, the unit here you don't need to simplify, although it does simplify. Volts per hertz per coulomb simplifies down to uh, joule seconds. But that's not what you need to do. That's okay. Right, what's next then? Um, use the graph to determine the maximum wavelength that will cause photoelectronics to be emitted from the photoelectronics. 
Okay, so they want the maximum wavelength, which is a kind of a sneaky way of saying minimum frequency, because um, if you think about the relationship V equals lambda F, C equals lambda F then, because V is C, so lambda equals C over F. So if they ever said maximum wavelength, that means the same thing as minimum frequency, or vice versa. Minimum wavelength is maximum frequency, because they have this opposite relationship. So if you look at your graph, you can see quite clearly where the minimum frequency is. Um, the smallest one is, oh, like about 4.5. Now actually you can calculate it exactly because what you're doing is you're looking for the root. So it means you're looking for this equation equal to zero. So if you did 1.889 divided by 0 0.42. Um, yeah, like we said, it looks like about 4.5. Now I think in the exam, they would expect you to do this from reading the graph. So you're supposed to draw a nice graph and then see where this crosses the x-axis and you say, oh, cross the 4.5. So you just worked out the minimum frequency is 4.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz, uh, which means the maximum wavelength is C over that. So 666 nanometers then. Okay, so if we go back to our formula earlier, you can see here that we said the slope is uh, h over e, and the c, which is a, a, a negative, is work function over e. So likewise, you could say uh, the work function equals E, which we definitely know, multiply C from our graph. Now the C on the graph, I can't do it here, I'm afraid, because my graph uh, doesn't go down enough. But what you're supposed to do is draw this line up to where it crosses the y-axis. Now the computer program can tell me that. It crosses it at this point, minus 1.889. Mm -hmm. So you don't care about the minus here. We just get rid of the minus. It's E times C. So that 1.889 times uh, E. Now we have to, again have to be careful with the units because um, the C is uh, in. Oh no, no problem with the units because it's volts, not anything weird. So what did you get when you multiply E by 1.889? Yeah. Or 1.889 electron volts, actually. Mm -hmm. um, what way did they give the answer? They said use the value of h given in the list of functions. So that, that, that means I have to use h here. Good point. Uh, ah, okay. We Did they say use the graph? To do this one? No. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, although they weren't being very, very clear, I almost feel like they wanted you to use this formula to get the work function because you can use the f from the previous part, the h from the formula book, the v, and the e. Because uh, the e is an electron, the v, the voltage is. Ah, okay. If you look here, when the F is minimum, the voltage is zero. Yeah, you can see it crosses the X axis here. So that means this is actually gone. So you get HF minimum equals the work function. Yeah, so the previous answer multiplied by H should give us the same number we got, you got a moment ago. So do you still have it on your calculator? You can leave it there. Yeah. So I'll do it on my calculator and then we can compare. Um, just tell me what constant is H on the lid there. Zero six. 
zero six, and then the previous answer it was um, six 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 nano. So we should have the same results. Is it because of the ten to the fourteen business? Ah, I tightened the wavelength instead of the frequency. No. Okay, let's try that again. Right, what did you get previously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's interesting because they had a certain way in mind for the student to do it because they previously asked for minimum frequency, I guess they were figuring that's what people will do next. Mm -hmm. But because this is a graph question, it feels like you should be using the intercept. Okay. How many marks for that though? Two. Hmm. Okay. Determine the maximum energy of the Okay. So again, we're going back to here it is here so kinetic energy is equal to hf minus work function so if they want this to be a maximum then you want this to be a minimum um, no what am I saying that's ridiculous sorry if you want this side to be maximum then you want this side to be maximum you can't change this but you can change this because this is just a constant. So if you want to make this bigger, you need to make this bigger. And to make this bigger, you need to make F bigger. So the maximum kinetic energy will be H times the maximum frequency minus the work function. Now, is there a maximum frequency on the graph? Well, that's actually, is that the formula I wrote down the wrong way earlier? Or is that the right one? HF, right? yeah. Okay. Um, they said determine the maximum kinetic energy. Hmm, interesting. So maybe we should do our little trick again where it says maximum uh, frequency is the same as minimum wavelength. Mm. And the smallest wavelength you can use is, oh yes, the smallest wave. Uh, mm. You don't have it on the graph. I don't have the maximum. No, you don't from the graph. How many marks is this? Mm. Oh, so there might be an extra step in between then. Okay, so we'll have to do something. Um, I don't know. What do they do in the marking scheme? Um, HF equals 50 over lambda. That's 50 over. Uh, equals 5 plus maximum kinetic energy. 5 plus maximum kinetic energy? Yeah. Oh yeah, because this equals kinetic energy, so all they did was they took the 5 to the left. Okay, so so far I'm not... Okay. That's it. That's all they did. Ah, uh, it's 
an English thing. It's an English thing. Uh, it's not a... Um, the question would be easier if they just said find the kinetic energy. It's not actually maximum kinetic energy. Uh, yeah, this is a... Uh, this is um, this is an unfortunate use of English where maximum can mean two different things. So, um, when the electron hits the panel and frees, when the photon hits the panel and frees the electron, the electron has kinetic energy. But in the formula they call that maximum kinetic energy, not because it's going as fast as it could possibly go, but what they're saying is this is the most kinetic energy it has, but it won't have this in real life because maybe some energy is lost off as heat from the solar panel because the solar panel maybe warms up or something like that. So Ke max is not the same thing as max Ke. So could you read the question again very slowly and carefully? I think they should have said this because that's a different thing to this. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a pain. Oh well. We know to be more careful when we are dealing with maximum in this context. So the question, I would have just rephrased that, determine the kinetic energy, and then you don't need to know maximum anything. Mm. Alright, what's next then? Determine the de Broglie wavelength of these electrons. The ah. of so the de Broglie wavelength formula is lambda equals h over p. The h we know, the p is um, mass times velocity. So in the previous question, once you had your kinetic energy, which is equal to a half times mass of electron times v squared. Mm -hmm. Once you know that, then you can know that because this is just a constant. Mm -hmm. Once you have the velocity, you pop it into the formula, multiply it by the mass, and then again, probably, well, I'm guessing that's a free mark. Yeah. 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 You kind of know it's a team here with the mark. If it's one mark, it's a direct answer. You just write it down. Two marks, you have to use one formula. For three marks, you probably have to use two formulas. Like here, you have to use this and then this. Mm. Um, so you don't really see four marks, because then I think the next one then is five. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. And six. Yeah, interesting. Uh, that was the end of the question, was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What What's left? There's just one more. Yeah. Oh no, there's another electricity one. Isn't there? Yeah, potential divider, and then atoms. Is it? Oh, it's a Kirchhoff. Mm. No, no, that's a different paper. Mm. B5, B6, B7, B7? No, B6, yeah, yeah, just two more. Okay. We'll do that next time, if you want. Or if not, we can do whatever you want. Whoever's here, whatever. Yeah. I'm flexible. Mm -hmm. Okay.